all right and continuing with uh, our trend of getting you very important and big marquee market voices on the day of our fifth birthday one more and doesn't get bigger than this ramdev agarwal managing director and co-founder of motia loswal financial services joins us right now on the show ramdev really good having you and thanks so much for joining in it's a special day for us really good having you patience on your fifth uh birthday i would say and uh, it's been actually uh, in fact i can't believe that it's just five years old because the kind of uh, gains you have the kind of visibility you have you are almost number one uh, almost there so it's quite an achievement for five years Yes, Ramdev, uh, and thanks so much. It's uh, because of support of people like you as well. Now, you know, Ramdev, I want I want to jump straight to the markets, uh, and and what your view is because the last three times that we've spoken off air, you've been spot on. When BJP won the four state elections, when the final verdict came out as well, and mm-hmm. eventually on the 16th May, when you knew, when I was at your dealing rooms and you mentioned about how the market is poised to attain new highs. Today mm-hmm. we are in the green as well, 100 points for the Nifty. What's the mood like? How are you? How bullish are you in the markets? Yeah. So uh, I think this mango has been fantastic, and we are still uh, seeing the uh, you know impact of two hundred two plus for BGP alone, and uh, you can see the the kind of assertion they have in various things, and uh, we will see more of it uh, 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 as we see the budget and all. So my sense is that from current levels. Uh, the corrections will be very very uh, short and shallow uh, which we are seeing even today uh, it is quite a surprise that uh, market bounce back there will be some news flow uh, but basically it's just not correcting so it's looking that uh, downs are temporary and ups are permanent you know that kind of thing is happening right now and uh, i would think that uh, uh, you know uh, till the budget and uh, after seeing the budget and unless uh, something breaks down in terms of oil price or uh, Monsoon, which is a short-term phenomenon right now, uh, I would think that uh, we are in for a good time, and I think 12 months performance from here can surprise a lot of people. You know, I mean, we can uh, we can say this P, that P, but I think uh, uh, as as the time passes and the actions taken by Modi government becomes cumulative in terms of the its impact on the economy and corporate performance, I think uh, the uh, the markets can move to very significantly higher level. from the good afternoon tamli here what is uh, uh, you know how much money is waiting on the sidelines because in terms of just the flows uh, you know it's not been a, a breakout number so to speak uh, we were expecting the post election verdict there would be a marked uh, upgrade in india and you know we would see uh, fis uh, coming by the dozen uh, you know in in your conversation with some of the big ticket clients that you manage or service uh, uh, what is the sense that you're getting in on the money that's waiting on the sidelines Yeah, so we carry a lot of Indian legal funds or hedge funds, which are predominantly uh, focused on to India, and they are saying that they are seeing some inflows, and uh, they are pretty confident that uh, they will get a lot more. And uh, it's just a matter of time. I mean, I think this turnaround is uh, too sudden and too big, and uh, I think uh, some some amount of uh, uh, even this budget watching is on right now. But uh, uh, when I speak to a lot of even uh, corporates who who are uh, looking uh, for you know foreign investments, they are saying that uh, now there is no holds bar kind of move from the foreign investors uh, on the ground of the FDI as well as uh, FII. So we are getting green signals, but as you said, we are not seeing the actual dollars on the ground here. So it may be little away, uh, maybe after the budget. But uh, I think directionally. We are still net net uh, getting positive numbers, not a very big number, but I think we'll keep getting uh, the flows. And uh, so I, I would st- and like if you look at the uh, IPO, this follow-on offerings, all of them they have gone through very attractively, and multiple times it got subscribed. Yes Bank or Kotak Man, uh, Kotak Bank or uh, your Idea Cellular. So all of them were significant raises, and all of them they went through very smoothly. So you have to count that part of the allocation also into the. stock investments but uh, given that you know we have as we speak regained 7600 after uh, you know a bit of a blip really on the markets where we came down to testing 7500 on the index uh, do you believe that we could see 8000 before the budget or, or is that something you know that kind of strong move for the market would perhaps only come by once that event is out of the way 
See, I, I don't know uh, what can happen in 15 days, but uh, I'm, I'm very clear that it, the strength of the market will surprise people. Uh, in the sense that stock specifically, if some stock has to do well, it will do so much more better than what anybody thought. You know, so uh, markets will be stronger and uh, uh, what kind of budget comes and what are the rumors and uh, how how fresh thinking the, the new finance minister brings. I think it all depends on that. So, and I'm quite sure close to the budget, uh, markets will know or the participants will know what exactly is coming in the budget. So, what kind of exercise is on, that will come to know closer to the budget and hence the levels will also be decided uh, as we come closer. So, but I think uh, so long as it is going to be positive, how does it matter whether it is going to be 7, 7, or 7, 8,000 or 8,200? I think directionally we are positive. That's very important. Pandev, uh, let's talk policy sensitives and one of the biggest moves that is being spoken about, it may come in with a bit of a delay, one doesn't know, but is the gas price higher. How yeah. big a positive it is for two or three large boys, OMGC, or Reliance Industries, is it a move that can actually re-rate these stocks completely from where they are right now? Yeah, clearly, I mean, the earnings impact uh, on ONGC is immediate, and Reliance, uh, of course, it is going to be immediate, but uh, since they have the leverage of uh, a lot more production in the future, the impact is much more futuristic than today, because the production is very limited right now. So, uh, and then it opens the possibility for Can India also, what are limited they are producing. So, clearly uh, the sector gets a lot more money than what they are getting today. So, it calls for reality. The other bit that I wanted to ask you about is that, yes, it's a, it's a known fact that wherever you put in money in the markets right now, you will make money. The idea is to beat the market and therefore, you know, the question to you, what is it that you believe will give much more bang for the buck if you were to put in fresh money at these levels. What sectors, what stocks, I mean you may not talk small cap stocks, but maybe you would be at liberty to maybe name a couple of large cap stocks since we are at our fifth birthday. Yeah, so uh, the way I am approaching is that uh, uh, I am cap independent first thing, I don't look at small cap, mid cap or large cap, I am open to buy any cap. Second, I am looking for uh, a company which is which is very well run. I mean, I don't want to buy sick companies or you know companies which are broken down right now. The the way it is going to work out is the companies which are best positioned today in any sector. When the business opportunities come, those are the companies which are going to make disproportionate gains out of that particular sector's move. Third, if there is a monopolistic or duopolistic situation in a company in a in an industry, say like Bosch is a uh, is a almost monopolistic in uh, diesel, uh, uh, diesel technology and automo automotive or uh, uh, the companies which have say, say like Aisha, Aisha has monopoly in the that particular type of uh, laser bike uh, in uh, Enfield uh, or so you know you have to find the monopolistic or geopolitical positioning of uh, dominant, dominant player in particular field which are profitable doing very well but today maybe the growth has slowed down or profits are a little lower because uh, there is a downturn or uh, times are a little tough. Uh, but whenever good times come, these are the companies which are going to do very well. So I would uh, even say look at Telco. Telco is making a lot of money in JLR, but they are actually losing money in India. But they are the dom most dominant, I mean 60-65% market share in the LCD or in, uh, in the entire truck segment. So whenever the economy turns around, I think Telco's domestic operations will do very well and uh, hence one should look at uh, uh, how, what kind of a leverage, operating leverage, financial leverage is working in domestic uh, operations of theirs. So combination of domestic operations and the fantastic overseas operations, I think you could have some interesting bet out there. So one has to, I would look at, uh, I would approach the things like this. Right, Ramdi, you've spoken about Tata Motors uh, as a good risk reward right now, despite the run-up on that stock. And, you know, you make a very fair point on that, given the turnaround that's expected in the domestic business. Give us two more names from the index alone where you think that there is a strong value opportunity despite the run-up. And also, if you could share a few uh, names from the broader universe, from the mid-cap, small-cap, you know, healthy companies, where there is still a strong value proposition. So, among the uh, regularly leveraged, very large, one of the largest companies are HPBPIs, so the entire uh, three sisters in uh, oil, oil refining marketing companies. 
I mean, one is waiting for the, whether the government is going to bite the bullet or not. Because if you don't reform the energy sector, particularly oil sector, your entire fiscal exercise is of no use. Because tomorrow if the oil goes to 125, 130, I mean, you might incur 100, 100, uh, 1 lakh crore loss or 2 lakh crore loss. So whatever you might say that uh, you have balanced the budget, you, your balance is never balanced. You are always at the mercy of global oil prices. So someday, uh, this government has to call the shot and say that it is actually decontrolled and uh, uh, you change the prices of petrol diesel as the market fluctuates. So once that happens, these companies are going to be, uh, I mean downside is limited. If they don't do it, that's what they are suffering right now and market doesn't believe that they are going to do it. But if that happens, which I think should happen under the new government, uh, the opportunity is big. Right. And if, uh the other other bit would be you know infra and that's the other pocket which most people believe will see quite a bit of change quite a bit of development but it's a very wide basket i mean how do you narrow down because a retail investor who is listening to you right now has limited funds and he wants to pick and choose as to where he puts in the money in the first place what do you like in infra uh, i'm particularly i see any broken business model i don't want to invest right now so okay. can i see uh, models getting repaired. Also, one port company, you know, uh, which port company we are talking about. So, port companies are doing very well. They are part of infrastructure. And if any power company is doing well, you should not be averse to buying into them. But uh, uh, one is that in infrastructure, a lot of this returns are capped. I mean, you cannot make it make more than 12 percent, 15 percent. So, upside is capped, downside is unlimited. You get me what I am saying? So, you know, you come out with 10,000 crores of investment. Upside is 12 percent and if you incur loss then government doesn't come to help you. So it's a very crazy kind of a situation for investing in infrastructure. So I would be very uh, careful where exactly I am going in infrastructure. Before we let you go around there, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time. We just can't let you go without getting a view on IIT. Uh, you know, after all that you for at the start of the year, uh, you know, what's the call right now for some of these names under sectoral rotation? We have seen activity build up. Uh, your top ideas from the IT space still uh, and your conviction calls there. Yeah, so I think uh, as the US unemployment and uh, global economy is recovering, I think uh, the software demand is clearly uh, uh, is becoming stronger. So the overseas markets are very strong and uh, the software market is uh, growing big time. Uh, the issue is, uh, I mean, one of the concerns was uh, currency, and I think we have seen that currency is not going to appreciate, but actually it is going to depreciate. So we are at 60, which seems to be a fair level, but uh, I would think that uh, if inflation remains at 8%, clearly the currency will remain weaker. And uh, so, uh, in that kind of situation, uh, with a dollar growth of about anywhere between 15 to 20% for a TCS or TechM or even Infosys now. Uh, I think uh, they all are trading at about 15, 17 times next year. They are very, very uh, fairly priced and uh, uh, they, they must form part of, uh, uh, they must form core part of your portfolio uh, despite India is very, very strong. We need diversification in IT uh, because India is really starts with IT and they are very profitable, very well managed and very reasonably priced. Ramdev Agrawal Khan, thank you enough for being a part of uh, our celebration of five years. Thanks so much for taking the time out. Your opinion, very, very valuable to us and our viewers. All the best. Thank you. That's Ramdev Agarwal with his views on the markets. 100 points up for the Nifty. Let's get in our technical experts. Uh, last seven minutes of trade left. Uh, Ashwini, uh, lots happened between the time that we spoke at 255 and now. For, uh,